As for his engine characters, Wilbert Audrey usually has a big headache with a few artists who don't know much about railways, as they would sometimes draw the same engine on a few different pages in which small children are quick to point them out and write to Audrey saying it wasn't right. In reply, instead of making a lame excuse by blaming it on the illustrator, he would write a backstory on how this happened, including the engines. Take Henry the Green Engine for a good example. In the original sketches by Audrey, he was originally drawn as a 442 Atlantic, but when the three railway engines came out in 1945, he was drawn inconsistently by William Middleton as a 462 and later C. Reginald Dalby as a 460 with similarities to Gordon. At the end of Edward Gordon and Henry, Henry was repainted blue as a reward. This, however, proved to be a big mistake, even more so when the fourth book, Tank Engine Thomas Again, was published in 1949, where Henry was drawn using all of Gordon's parts, which you could say caused a lot of confusion and delay for both Audrey and children. By the fifth book, Troublesome Engines, Henry was repainted in his original green coat again, although originally Audrey had planned to ride him out of the series until he decided to create a much more happier ending for the character. So in the following book, Henry the Green Engine, he wrote a story where Henry had a big accident while pulling the Flying Kipper and was sent to crew where he was rebuilt into a much developed character, looking splendid and strong. Afterwards, Audrey continued to write backstories for Thomas, Edward, Gordon, James, and Percy involving their real prototypes and how they look different in the illustrations. From Toby onwards, all the characters would be illustrated as closely to their real-life counterparts. Sometimes, Audrey would take more character bases from real railways and their stories too, which include the Tallyflynn Railway, Scar Lowy, the Ravenglass and Estale Railway, Arlesdale, and the Snowden Mountain Railway, Caldy Fell. Even famous engines from real life often made numerous appearances in both the railway series and TV series, like City of Truro, Tallyflynn and Dolgok, Stepney, Flying Scotsman, Mallard, Duchess of Hamilton, Green Arrow, Wilbert, etc. However, in order to do so, Audrey would have to use acknowledgement and help given by many members who work on the respective heritage railways or those who own these engines, as we often see a few notes in some of the books, usually in the forward section or at the end. As for the island of Sodor, set between the UK and the Isle of Man where the engines live and work, Wilbert, along with his brother George Audrey, took inspiration from the Isle of Man with its bishop title, Sodor and Man, and created some wonderful geography and detail about the island's history, railways, people, kings, castles, etc. To Wilbert and many others, it was an age that is gone. When Britt Allcroft brought the Railway series to life on the TV screens titled Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends in 1984, she stated in the documentary Return to Shining Time that, even though she hadn't read the books before as a child, she had grown a huge fascination of the illustrations while she was interviewing Wilbert Audrey at the Bluebell Railway. And looking at them, she had a marvelous vision of how she wanted the world of Thomas and Sodor to look on the screen, for it would be three-dimensional so that us fans in childhood can feel that we can step into this world. I know I certainly have for how real the models and scenery look, but she couldn't have done it without the help of the modeling crew and director David Mitten with his idea for the use of live-action model animation. What's more interesting is that in Season 5, some of the episodes are based on real events too, including the most notable one, A Better View for Gordon, where it is based on a famous crash at Germont-Pernas in 1895. 
Others were inspired by true railway incidents that railway consultant David Maidman had witnessed during his time on British Railways. Examples include James and the Trouble with Trees, Bah, Double Teething Troubles, Busy Going Backwards, Gordon and the Gremlin, A Big Surprise for Percy, and Duncan Gets Spooked. This was because David Midden was keen to use them as the basis of those episodes as they were often better than fiction. When Britt Allcroft sold the rights of the show to Hit Entertainment in 2002, most of the episodes in the remainder of the new seasons of Thomas are just original story ideas by individual writers and not a single one based on a real railway incident, except for maybe a few. Take Cautious Connor, for example, where it is inspired by what had happened on the New York Central Railroad where a Niagara class had its piston rod snapped off. And even Buckled Tracks and Bumpy Trucks is based on a similar railway practice where it had tracks being painted wide for protection of getting buckled in hot weather. However, the only tradition that's still kept in the franchise are the characters, or almost a few of them, that are based on real engines and vehicles, as well as some authentic railway practices. So in conclusion to my essay, for a franchise like Thomas himself, I love it not just because of its beloved characters and stories, but also for what he does like real trains do. Being a railway enthusiast and train lover that I am, these characters and their bases can be found all over the world in which we can go and actually see them. Even the stories that are based on real-life incidents are truly fascinating to hear about from the author and everyone else's perspectives. While some people think Thomas was just another one of those basic made-up kids shows made for merchandising, for me and a lot of other fans, we know a lot better than what they thought, because the Reverend W. Audrey didn't just create the stories for merchandising, oh no. He took a lot of inspiration and research to ensure that the characters and stories are well written, have a lot of real potential, and can run authentically for fans of all ages and train enthusiasts alike. Even Britt Allcroft when she worked on the show. Well, despite one hiccup like Audrey's criticism of Henry's Forest because of its ignorance of Rule 55, even though I loved it, and even if the incidents used as the basis for the stories can be scary at times, Audrey would always provide a happy ending to the solution to the character's problems. But of course, with the news of this upcoming and unfortunate new reboot happening this year, this makes me wonder throughout this whole time, have we ever seen an episode in the past newer seasons of Thomas where it is based on a real railway story? Or even yet, will we ever see an episode based on one? Well, there are a few I just mentioned previously, but not as much in the modern seasons of Thomas. And considering what Mattel is doing with the franchise, I don't think there would ever be a chance of that in the future. But for us Thomas fans on social media, we can still keep that tradition alive with original stories of our own, especially through the fan series. Even for some stories, we take inspiration based on actual railway events that will last this legacy for as long as it lives on. So for me, as a true Thomas fan that I am, no matter what happens to our favorite beloved franchise, we can always go back to a bygone age that we will always remember and cherish within our childhood hearts.